It all began as a quest for survival in those first tough years post-war. The pressing need to develop an export track record to qualify for government-controlled supplies of steel. The need to generate rapid cash flow to fund new car development. Most vital of all, the need to support a huge factory and workforce at Solihull. Whether by good luck or good timing, Morris Wilkes, chief engineer at Rover, and his brother Spencer, the chairman, hit on the idea of a civilian, peacetime, go-anywhere vehicle. A concept to replace the army surplus Willis and Ford Jeeps put to use worldwide to help rebuild the agriculture and industry of war-ravaged countries. In just five months, the first prototypes of the project known from the start as the Land Rover are ready. There's urgency in the air. The Land Rover has to be shown internationally and quickly. The Amsterdam Motor Show, the 30th of April, 1948. Innovation takes the world stage. The Land Rover is starkly practical in appearance, yet with distinctively purposeful good looks. Amidst motor industry talk of a people's car, the Land Rover is acclaimed for delivering all-purpose utility with efficient comfort and value. The Land Rover breaks the mold of conventional thinking, setting forever a benchmark in authentic four-wheel drive design and engineering. It has permanent four-wheel drive, enabling engine braking for serious off-road work and giving maximum grip in bad conditions. With two ranges of gears, four high, four low, using a transfer box for maximum torque and traction. The backbone of the vehicle is an immensely strong box section steel chassis. With non-corroding hard aluminium alloy body panels and flooring, waterproofed wiring, and all weather finishes inside and out. It's a vehicle that is extraordinarily fit for purpose because of the attention to detail of its engineers, including features like an oil bath air filter to keep out fine dust and sand, pressure water cooling to ensure the engine can run at full output over long periods, and a handbrake acting directly on the transmission to hold the vehicle securely on the steepest of inclines. The Land Rover's scene too is a breakthrough in accessibility and ease of maintenance. Just 15 minutes to remove the front, middle or rear body parts. From day one, the Land Rover has been designed as a multi-purpose vehicle system with a winch. Power takeoffs, center and rear. and a class-leading ability to tow loads of up to 800 kilograms, 1,800 pounds. Even now, it seems astonishing that so many new ideas were to be found in one vehicle concept. Ideas which have been crucial in shaping the future direction of all four-wheel drive design and engineering. Even as the Wilkes brothers were blazing a trail in technology, the world's adventurers and explorers were blazing new trails in Land Rovers through uncharted territory. As early as 1949, Colonel LeBlanc drove from Britain to Abyssinia. And in the 50s, men like Lawrence van der Post pioneered the use of Land Rovers for expeditions, as he set out in search of bushmen and the lost world of the Kalahari. The company showed flair and foresight. Expeditions reached inhospitable regions of the world and demonstrated the guts and capability of the product to potential customers. So judicious support was given to professional explorations under the aegis of the Royal Geographical Society, for whom Land Rover remains a sponsor to this day.
promoted as the most versatile vehicle in the world, the Land Rover achieves global success because the company listens to its customers in developing the performance and capability of the product. With short and long wheelbase platforms, the half-ton lightweight designed for air transport and used by forces in 140 countries. And the radical forward control, an innovative approach to customer needs for more load space and increased payload. To prove the worth of the prototype, the Army tackled the breadth of the Sahara, making the west to east crossing from Dakar to the Red Sea a distance of 7,500 miles in just 100 days. Land Rovers have been built under license in over 30 countries, from Belgium to Peru and exported to every single nation around the globe, helping to create the legend that for much of the world's population, the first vehicle they'd ever seen was a Land Rover. It's a vehicle which has become the servant of the world. Most companies would count themselves fortunate to have created one defining moment of automotive history. But Land Rover, now a separate company in all but ownership, is to repeat this feat in 1970. Not by luck, but by judgment. Project Oyster, the 100-inch station wagon, was again the result of innovation. This time the first ever proper market research study, undertaken in the USA. This predicted that the real potential for sales growth lay in the use of four-wheel drive vehicles for leisure and recreation. An emerging market, tapped by functional estates like the Ford Bronco and Jeep Wagoneer, and by Toyota with the utility Land Cruiser. Back at Solihull, Gordon Bashford and Spen King grasped the potential of this insight, seizing the opportunity to create an entirely new vehicle concept, which will combine the excellent off-road performance of the Land Rover with genuine on-road comfort and drivability. Progress is rapid from concept approval in January 68, undertaken in great secrecy and with fanatical commitment. It creates an engineering package of world-class supremacy. A new long-travel suspension with low-rate coil springs and a self-leveling strut at the rear. Exhilarating power from the new lightweight 3.5-litre aluminium V8, delivering excellent on-road speed and acceleration, as well as torque at low revs for off-roading. Permanent four-wheel drive with a vacuum-controlled centre differential for awesome grip. And disc brakes all round to give saloon-like stopping power. David Bache's masterful styling of the original Blashford King design creates these classic Range Rover lines, which win a Design Council award and see Land Rover's flagship exhibited in the Louvre as an example of modern sculpture. At launch on the 17th of June 1970, Range Rover is a revolution in vehicle design and technology. Its breathtaking performance astonishes the world. Precise manners on-road, with exceptional ride comfort and effortless motorway cruising at up to 90 miles an hour, 140 kilometers per hour. Seemingly limitless potential off-road, exceeding even the ability of a Land Rover, still the world's benchmark in four-wheel drive. And progress on tarmac or cross-country enjoyed from a commanding position in the driving seat, affording 360 degrees of airy visibility above the traffic and hedgerows. For a decade, Land Rover simply couldn't keep pace with demand. 100,000 Range Rovers were built, three quarters of them going to customers outside the UK. Land Rover had achieved a double world first. Throughout the 80s, customer needs drive an accelerating program of development. Range Rover becomes an icon of British taste, an expression of intrinsic class, understated yet full of character and a realistic alternative to the traditional luxury saloon. No competitor comes close to Range Rover's supremacy off-road, which is demonstrated time and again in challenges of arduous endeavor.
1987 marks the return of Land Rover to the United States and renewed commitment to maintaining the company's leadership in four-wheel drive technology. The introduction of the viscous coupling unit is a world first for Land Rover. This senses automatically when a wheel is losing traction and progressively locks the center differential to distribute torque equally to front and rear axles. A year later, the new 3.9 V8 engine is accompanied by another world first. A sophisticated four-channel ABS system, operational at all speeds on and off-road. In 1993, with the launch of the 4.2-liter Vogue LSE, Land Rover introduced electronic traction control and the revolutionary electronic air suspension, both world firsts in four-wheel drive. And in 1994, Range Rover is the first four-wheel drive to feature driver and passenger airbags as standard, having carried out a brutal test regime to ensure that the bags are not accidentally deployed in violent off-road maneuvers. But between the two poles of Land Rover's world, the indomitable champion of all-terrain utility and the flagship of ultimate capability, the four-wheel drive market is changing yet again. And for the first time, it's owned by the Japanese. Manufacturers with enormous resources and sales muscle, producing vehicles like the Shogun, Trooper and Patrol. These four-wheel drives are bought for the family as an essential part of their lifestyle, in image as much as function. Time is of the essence. This new market is growing fast. Land Rover established Project J with a brief to deliver a new leisure vehicle that will define the standards of an entire sector. A vehicle designed without compromise for the lives customers choose to lead in the 90s. A breakthrough multifunctional team approach is adopted, with designers and engineers alongside manufacturing and service people. By working on the project simultaneously instead of consecutively, Project J is taken from concept to launch in just 30 months, faster than any other European vehicle at the time. In parallel, a new diesel engine is developed, the 200 TDI, a high-speed direct-injection turbo diesel with intercooler. At the heart of the program, it's the needs of future customers which determine the shape, styling and specification of Project J, a multi-purpose leisure vehicle for activities, sports and adventure. On the 9th of September 1989, Discovery is unveiled at the Frankfurt Motor Show and receives a claim for the innovation of its interior, earning Land Rover another Design Council Award. And when the world's press drive Discovery at Plymouth in October, the 200 TDI engine is a revelation. Best in class for top speed, torque, towing and fuel economy. In its first year of sales, Discovery outsells its nearest Japanese competitor by 3 to 1 in the UK, becoming the top-selling four-wheel drive leisure vehicle in Europe. The rapidity of Discovery's success transforms the Land Rover business. From a plant built to deliver 300 vehicles a week, Land Rover are shipping 1,800 a week by 1994. As the rollout of the product worldwide climaxes with Discovery's powerful debut on the USA market. It's already known for surviving virtually every form of driving torture known to man, except one. Are we there yet? <laughs> Between 1990 and 1994, Land Rover's total production doubles from 60,000 units to 120,000 units a year. Behind the scenes, however, the leaders of the business are tackling a challenge never before encountered at Land Rover. It's a challenge of unprecedented sensitivity, which demands extraordinary skills. 
It's the challenge of replacing a classic, the classic, the Range Rover. The original Land Rover, now called Defender, has been continuously evolved over 40 years. There's not one component on the vehicle unchanged, yet its shape is as distinctive as ever. Range Rover is loved by its loyalists, but the original design is now over 20 years old. To meet customer expectations of a luxury four-wheel drive in the 90s, the classic has to be replaced. But not so much replaced as recreated through evolution rather than revolution. New chassis, new engines, new steering, new axles front and rear, new suspensions. Underneath the skin of Range Rover, the designers and engineers adopt a radical approach. It's signaled to the customer in the revolutionary new H-gate control on the automatic transmission a symbol of Land Rover's preeminence in four-wheel drive innovation. The new Range Rover will carry the crown of off-road supremacy with a total redefinition of on-road refinement and handling. But in updating Range Rover's classic lines, the design team take a more conservative approach, respecting the loyalty of owners. During August 1994, the first all-new Range Rover for a quarter of a century is unveiled to the world's press at Cliveden to 800 key journalists from 45 countries. And in September, Land Rover staged one of the most innovative customer introductions ever for a new vehicle launching simultaneously with owners worldwide in 57 markets during one 48-hour period. Live coverage of the new Range Rover in action is relayed by satellite to the UK from Patagonia, Vermont, Botswana and Tokyo, as well as locations in Europe. It is estimated that over 50,000 people took part in this global celebration. Owners and prospects, dealers and staff, Land Rover people worldwide. And even more owners of Discovery, Defender and Range Rover are able to see the new flagship before its public reveal in Paris on October the 4th, 1994. The story of Land Rover is a story of innovation, the brilliance of its engineers, the insight of its designers, the flair and foresight in marketing and communications, the understanding of customer needs for the future. It's a story that's even now entering a new and exciting period with the launch of Freelander, the new Land Rover for the fast-growing small and medium sectors of the four-wheel drive leisure market. Highly volatile, highly competitive, it's a market without a leader, crowded with products from manufacturers who don't have Land Rover's credentials in four-wheel drive. It's an emerging market in which young families and the young at heart are looking for the spirit of adventure, the thrill of driving a vehicle that has presence and relevance in the city, and real ability to escape from it. Freelander is the result of Land Rover's imagination and innovation. A design which takes the architecture of Land Rover forward for the future, with the chassis actually integrated within the monocoque body for high rigidity and torsional stiffness. Styling that draws on traditional Land Rover cues, but uses new materials for long-lasting durability. Under the tough, rugged exterior, there are yet more world firsts in technology for off-roading and a radical approach to class domination, with the launch of two distinctively different vehicles off one platform. The three-door multi-purpose champion with a striking soft bag. And the five-door station wagon design, 
something new that could only be a Land Rover. Yet Freelander itself is just the first of a whole new generation of Land Rovers, as the story of innovation begun 50 years ago continues for the next century.